So Joe, you've been around the boxing game for years. You've trained with some of the best out there. Um, at this point, does it, do you even have a memorable moment? Do you have a certain milestone with certain fighters that you that you really remember and think about, and you think, wow, that was that was a great moment? Yeah, that's just to name a few. No, that's a great question. Um, you know, I don't think there's a championship that you're ever involved in, especially that you win, that isn't you know a, a high mark for you in your career. But the one that stands out the most, and you might be surprised, and it wasn't Diego Corrales, and it wasn't Casemiro, and it wasn't Michael Nunn, and so on and so forth, but it was Gabriel Relis and Rafael Relis. Those were the two, I would say, well, especially Gabriel, because he had such a rough time with injuries um, that it almost looked like he had a career-ending injury. And it was really something that, you know, bothered me to no end because I was there when it happened and, you know, was part of it. Um, bottom line is that when he was able to come back from that after two surgeries and, you know, a year and a half out of the game, it was, that to me was like well, it's a, a big burden good. off my back. Right. It was something that, you know, there was more attached to him winning the title than almost anybody else. You know, everyone else kind of got there the way you normally get there. But Gabriel had, he took a, you know, we took a wrong turn, so to speak. And so to get back on track, get physically healthy again, you know, and repair the arm that was broken in half, basically. All of these things were big obstacles to overcome. And, you know, overcoming them was one thing, but overcoming them and then winning a championship was really... Something. Yeah, it was really something. Mm -hmm. that, that, so that, when I'm asked that question, that's the one that stands out right. in my mind awesome. the most. But believe you me, every championship. Everyone's got a milestone. Every one of them. I've got a story for you how near and dear to my heart they are. But that one in particular because of the, the circumstances leading up to it. Awesome. So can you tell me a little about some of the prospects? I know I was able to see a couple of them today. Tuck, yeah. Tuck, 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 yeah uh -huh. right. He had a great sparring session. Right. Yeah. Well, he's... You know, he's new on the block right now. He's been here for a couple months. He was the silver medal winner from the 2012 London Olympics. I thought he won the gold, but you know, he didn't get it. I thought he won two and a half out of three rounds, to tell you the truth. But, you know, that being said, um, he's a tremendous. A lot of people are going, man, you got the next Pacquiao. Right. He's explosive. He's yes. just, he is explosive. He's accurate. He hits all the right notes. And, um, you know, without saying too much more, you don't come across these type of guys very often. He's, he's certainly exceptional. Yeah. So, you never know what the future holds, but, you know, in, in the, in the best case scenario, this kid can go all the way. Okay. So, can you, can you compare to me fighters, because I get this question asked all the time by, by followers, you hear about it all the time, fighters not fighting the best these days, do you, do you feel like that's true, or do you feel like it's just a different time, it's a different era? It's hard to compare the fighters today from the fighters of yesterday. Well, there's a couple questions in there, but you know, the, the, the main question are the best fighters fighting each other. You know, I mean, the example that you could use as no, they're not, is Mayweather and Pacquiao, but that's an anomaly again. You know. Um, I'd say everyone that needs to be fighting tough fights are fighting tough fights. Now, does a guy deserve, after two back-to-back -back fights, kind of a fight that you, you're probably going to win, where it's not a, a pick em, a 50-50, but it's probably more like an 80-20 or a 70-30? Yeah. You know, but those can turn disastrous, too. Don't ever kid yourself. But that being said, look, I mean, here's a, here's a great matchup coming right now. John Molina, Jr., who's one of my favorite all-time fighters. I mean, look, he just won fight of the year. He had knockout of the year against Mickey Bay. You know, he's an exciting guy. He gave Matisse all he could handle. Yeah. Don't get me going on, Matisse. <laughs> Regardless, he's going to fight uh, Adrian Broner. Tough fight. For Broner? Yes. Yeah. Look, it's a tough fight for both guys. I never look. When you're at that level, both guys are great. Right. And you got to give them their respect, and their due. 
Broner, I've often said it, is a very... That fight he had with uh, Maidana really uh, made me think more highly of him than I had ever thought, even when he lost. So uh, nothing but respect for the guy, and you know he's a, you know he's a he's kind of a Mayweather clone, but without all the movement, right? And a little bit, well, you know, a little bit bigger puncher maybe at this weight. You know, Mayweather was a better puncher when he was a lighter weight. If there's one thing that you think Adrian Broner brings to the table that that you, you're going to look out for, what would that be? Well, look, he's, he, you know, he's got a good pop. He's got a good pop. He's slick. He's got that great shoulder roll, come back on you real quick. You throw punches, you leave openings, he'll, he'll exploit openings on you. So, you know, you know he's got that, that little shoulder roll style and tuck and roll, and he's accurate, hits hard. You know, so, I mean, that's takes a great punch. He's got heart, got determination. You know, everything my guy's got as far as heart, determination, conditioning. Molina's a different style fighter, though. And sometimes those two different styles make for good fights. Always, yeah. I think that's going to make for a great, great fight. Now, that being said, um, you've got uh, Robert Guerrero as the co-main, March 7th, NBC, uh, MGM Grand, fighting... Uh, Keith Thurman, is it? Keith yeah. Thurman. Keith Thurman. It's a great fight. <laughs> well, it's a great card overall. Yeah, it's a great card. It's a great way to start the year. Um, so, I mean, that kind of, you know, the theory goes out the window when you just, you know, beginning of the year, you hear of two great matchups like that. And that's not where it ends. Right. You know, Al Heyman has got uh, a lot of shows slated for NBC. And I guarantee it, they're all going to be blockbusters. It's going to be stuff that you anticipate to see on Showtime or something like that. So my last couple of questions. Mm -hmm. I've seen a couple of interviews with you, and I know you're an Amir Khan fan. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that he might, at this point, have more speed than the likes of Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather? You know, speed's one thing. Timing's another. Yeah. There's a lot of fast guys that get beat by a guy that knows how to time speed, you know. So speed's a good thing. It's never going to hurt you necessarily. It's better than being slow. Right. right. But, but timing is an art, you know, just like in comedy. <laughs> it's all about timing. So if you were to put one or the other against Mayweather between Pacquiao and Miracone, who do you think would fare better? At against Amir Khan, who would fare better? Against uh, Floyd Mayweather, between Amir Khan and uh, Manny Pacquiao. Look, I, even if you thought Amir Khan would do better than Manny Pacquiao against Mayweather, I still think that the overriding emphasis here is the fact that we've been waiting for these two to fight for a long time. So if there's actually an opportunity to make that fight, that's who I want to see, and I think that's who most people want to see. Maybe a little past the due date, but nevertheless, it's still the fight we want to see. And then Amir Khan, you know, fights the winner, let's say. You know, I think that'd be fair. But we, you got to see Pacquiao and Mayweather fight first. If, there's a, if those three are involved, I'd rather see Mayweather, Pacquiao, or Pacquiao, Mayweather, than Khan, Pacquiao, Khan, Mayweather. Just at this point, before they both get... Right. Too far past their prime. And my last question, the other big mega fight that's also that presumably going to be made sometime is Cotto Canelo. Who do you see winning that fight and why? Well, i got to tell you, Canelo's really, I'm sorry, uh, Cotto's really uh, had a new lease on life, basically. I mean, he, I don't know if he's taking things more seriously after a lull of not taking it serious, but he looks better than ever. And I'll tell you, that experience, and sometimes when a guy gets a little bit older, and he realizes, man, I got X amount of years to do this. I'm going to really apply myself. That's a guy that can be dangerous. And I think Cotto's a very dangerous guy right now. On the other hand, look, I like Canelo, but I've said it before. I've seen the same Canelo now for the past six fights. You know, 
Now some guys are what they are. You're gonna get what you get, and you're gonna expect that. And a guy like Canelo, who's very, he, he's a thinking guy, he's a precision puncher, he's athletic, so a guy like that should be getting better every time you see him fight, especially since he's only, you know, 23 maybe right now, 24. 24. You know, from 22 to 24, I should have seen, wow, this guy is really getting better fight by fight like you normally see. But to me, he's great, but he's also, I think, you know, in a static position here right now where he's fighting the same way every fight. Now... That being said, if he doesn't step up his game and start doing more things, which are a few, too many to be mentioned, but the point being, if he doesn't step up his game, Cotto has got that game, okay? So he could give Canelo lots of problems. I'd say the thing Canelo has on him is maybe the, the power. You know, he's a, probably a stronger guy, but Canelo, I'm sorry, Cotto is a very accurate, busy sharpshooter. He'll hit you with a hook, uppercut, and back to the liver before you know it. I mean, those are exquisite things that only the best can do. He's capable of doing it. So I'll tell you, I, I would not even think about counting Cotto out of that fight. Awesome. Joe Goosen, thanks for taking time for to speak with us today. Oh, no problem, Pete. Thank you. This is Joe Goosen, and you're tuned in to Round by Round Boxing.